How you doing, Madam Clark? I'm good. How are you? How's it going, William? If you see Kim on the line, tell her that Evangelist Barbara Cooper is going to do the present at 7 o'clock. Okay, I'm texting her right now because I was texting her something else. Okay. All right. Let, they tell, uh, uh, tell children to look for her number. I think her number is a 505 number. She should come up on the screen, though. Yeah, I just want to make sure that she's on, and then I'll be putting my phone up um, for the duration of the meeting. Put it up. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't have my cell phone for the meeting. No. I'm just making sure she's getting on good. Once she gets on, uh, that'll be that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who's regulating the meeting, Steve? Uh-huh, man. Uh, Ms. uh Troy. Okay. Uh, you gotta give them that five oh it's three three one three five oh five one one four oh. So they can look for it, because I don't know if her name will come up. By being I'm sorry, Councilman. Can you repeat that for me? Okay, it's her number is 313-505-1140. Barbara Evangelist Barbara Cooper. Thank you. You're welcome. Is um the treasurer on, Mr. VJ? Is he? Is he on there? I can't. Oh, yeah, um, on VJ. He on there. I asked him to unmute VJ. Yeah. Okay. VJ, can you hear me? Yeah, are you guys not able to hear me? I couldn't oh, hear you. No, I can no. hear you. I, I can hear you now. Um, you can go you ahead can. if if you like and get started okay. until um, Mirpo Tim Howard gets on. Okay, and uh, bear with me here, um, but uh, I do want to. Welcome everybody. Um, as you know, uh, the mayor is not here today and uh, just want to give our heartfelt condolences to him and his family, um, everything they have going on right now. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, I think the first thing we do is uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. No, this is for orientation, VJ. We're just doing orientation. Um, where we're just we just, orientation. Yep. Well, we're just going to go down the what's on the agenda and see if the uh, council has any questions or concerns about anything. Okay. Is that just opening it up for discussion? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, let me just state that um, the mayor, I sent out an email, has asked for the previous business. He, he, he wanted it removed from the agenda, but it actually needs to be tabled um, to another date specific. So if it can be removed from the table and then tabled again, um, he needs to get additional, um, he's seeking additional information for that, for that particular item, um, item A under previous business. We can just remove it from the agenda? Mm -mm, because you tabled it to this day, remember? To this meeting. Are you sure that? <laughs> I thought we yeah. Did that. I thought we did the, the other one. Um, It came back for this meeting for this date, for it to come back for this meeting. So it's under previous business. You got to do something with it. Um, You can't just remove it. 
So you have to remove it from the table, and then you can. We gotta be at the regular meeting, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. VJ, are you still there with us? Yep. No, I'm sorry. I'm here. Um, so, uh, admittedly, I'm going to need you to guide me through exactly sure. what they hear. Um, so, what we can do is um, what you want to look at your agenda, and you can ask them if they have, um, there's a presentation um, that's to be had um, by a developer in reference to John Daly and Bayhan, they might have um, some questions on that. And then you just go down each um, item, uh, you know, for previous business, we talked about that. And then you go into new business and see if they have any discussion that they want to have um, in regards to any of those items. And we do have a closed item session, um, which will be the McGill matter. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so, Looking over the uh, point number three, the presentations and discussions regarding the property development at John Daly and Bayhan, uh, are there any discussion points or questions surrounding that? Well, I thought we were just going to pay until we get the other information. No, not the presentation, um, Reverend Williams. The, per the person is here to present. Um, they're going to present, is my understanding. Um, if Tracy is still on the phone, on the line here, and then the item is just being removed. But my understanding is they're still doing the presentation. Okay, so so we just got to remove it once it come once it come to the uh, regular meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Clerk Rutledge, for that. I reached out to the developer to make sure that he will be on the line because he was aware that his item was tabled. So I am okay. coordinating with him now. Okay. Um, okay. So now, um, VJ, you just kind of want to um, go down to like the consent agenda and, and so forth and see if they have any. Um, All right. Thank you. Um, so regarding point 5A, um, were there any questions regarding the meeting minutes for the prior city council meeting? Questions or comments? All right. Moving on down. Um, are there any questions or comments regarding the 2021 Planning Commission uh, meeting dates? All right. Going down to point 5C, uh, are there any questions, comments, or discussion relating to the Allen Brothers uh, invoice for the amount of $31,717.80. Uh, Mr. Chair? All right. Sorry. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, yeah, reference the Allen Brothers bill. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if we're supposed to talk about this in right now, but it's uh, concerning, I guess, a current litigation. I'm going to wait until the um, closed session, but I do have a question regarding the uh, bill that was submitted. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so yeah, during the uh, uh, during the next session, we can uh, discuss that. Uh, is it a, she just kept discussing the bill. Is, is uh, Harry's on the line? Can you? Yeah, she's Harry on. She got a question to Harry. Yeah, he's on the line. As long as it's not got anything to do with a, a closed session item, you know, she got a question to ask. You need to bring Harry on. Right, Harry. Yeah, both, both Harry and Eric are on. <laughs> yeah. What's the other, What's the other one name, Steve? Eric Ladez. Okay, Eric. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Yes, um, I'm here also from our office, uh, Neil Payak and uh, Eric Lodez. Um, as you know, um, Eric is handling most of, uh, I think, the litigation that's coming up. And really, this is just information time. I don't have all the particulars, um, uh, Councilwoman Watley, uh, regarding the, the billing. And um, I, I'm not sure. It probably would be better to discuss this when we're actually in session, because you might want to take some action at that time this is a time for information and and not for taking action i'm not trying to take any action okay i was well, trying to ask a question regarding whether this litigation was still pending and if it is then we do need to go into closed session right uh -oh. well we we do have closed session scheduled for later on today well that's what i said i wanted to do yeah. hold until closed session but i was letting you know i do have a question about your bill Okay, very well. Okay. Um, Woman Howard is on now, um, uh, uh, VJ. Oh. So you can okay. just let her know. Um, I can, we left off. He was going through the agenda. We left off at um, boards and commissions. Okay. Hi, Hi everyone. Good evening, madam. Yeah. Pardon me? I didn't hear you. I said good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Okay, so is anything on previous business that anyone would like to discuss? Um, I sent an email out, um, Madam Chair, that that item is going to be um, removed from the table and then tabled again per the mayor he wants to he's seeking additional information um for the for that okay do we still have our presentation for tonight um uh tracy ann jennings is checking into that um right now okay okay so on, up under new business uh first item excuse me mayor pro tem yes is there some way, okay, we're having something tabled because they want additional information. Does anybody know in reference to what additional information they need for tabling this item? Uh, I don't have a clue. This is the first that I've heard of. Yeah, I, and I'm understanding <laughs> that, but considering the fact that we've passed very little, very little meaningful legislation in the past year we've been here, everything always seems to get tabled. Is there some concrete reason why this is being tabled? I'm, I'm not sure, Councilman uh, Wadley. I'm not sure. I, have, I didn't know I, that. I think he, the, the, the she's, chair. Kind of reached, she's trying to reach the person now. Um, VJ? This this is in regards to the previous business, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, based on a brief conversation with the mayor, I think what he wanted was a bit more of a definitive uh, description here of the lot itself and where it was located. Um, so I think given that he was thinking we should table it for right now, um, coupled with uh, the fact that he's not here tonight. So uh, I think once we have an ability to sort of clarify the description on the parcel and everything. Um, I think that's when he wanted to open that back up for discussion. So this is the second time this has been on the agenda and we're not sure where it is? Correct. 
like I said, Councilman Wally, I, this is the first that I've heard of it because the mayor has not talked to me about this prior to me coming on uh, the Zoom meeting. So I'm not for sure. This is the first I that I've I did send out an email um, earlier to you all to let you know. I think it might have been around uh, one thirty or something. Yeah, see, I'm at work, so I wouldn't have got that email. So, okay. I understand, and it's no reflection on you. We're used to getting things at the very last minute under this administration. So I'm just trying to find out what we need to do in the interim while we're tabling this to... Uh, Whatever. I just want to know what the stipulations are about it. I should have been, I should have realized that I wasn't going to get the information I needed. And that's not anything against the people that are here tonight. I've talked about transparency ever since I sat down in this chair last November. So thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, Felicia, so the, uh, the person who's supposed to speak on is property development. They're not here. They're not. Uh -huh. On her call. Yeah, she just she just got on the um, phone and reached. Uh, she said she's reaching out to them. So um, she'll. Uh, she said she would chime in and let us know before the meeting. Okay. Okay. So under new business, um, is it any item that anyone would like to discuss? Item A. Okay. What about B? Okay, up under um, item B, I did have a question in regards to uh, traffic. Um, is Caitlin are, is is Caitlin on? Okay, I guess we have to go up after go go Hi. to. Hi, Sorry. Caitlin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, yes, I would like to. I have a question on this item B, consider approval of special land use for the purpose marijuana and adult, uh, adult use marijuana located on Bayham Street between Dunning and railroad tracks. Okay. So um, will there be traffic? Have you guys thought about the traffic that may um, due to it, it is a residential on the, across, uh, across the street from this place. So did you guys talk about traffic as far as, you know, the hours, I think the hours would be from nine to nine. Right. So we didn't talk about the traffic, um, but these facilities don't usually have that many people coming to and from them. Okay. At, um, since their hours are only well, since their hours are between nine and um, nine, I believe most days they shouldn't. It's not going to be like late night traffic or early morning traffic for the most okay, part. Okay, so this is going to be a cultivation uh, process of facility, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Did anybody else have any question on item B? No, I I, I would like to know. You know, when I looked at it. It's back up in the back part. It's not in, up in the traffic part, uh, Madam Chair. It's, it's right. in the back, um, over by the um, It's behind City Hall. Over by the junkyard. Right, behind City Hall. Right, over the railroad track, City Hall. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions on item C? Okay, what is C? For six month extension for special lands use for the purpose of medical marijuana multi use facility that's going on, uh, that's going on an industrial drive between Henry Ruff and Middle Belt. Madam Chair? Yes. I just wanted to say, uh, I guess for the record now, and I'll say it at the uh, uh, general meeting as well, during our planning commission meeting, the um, applicant requested for a one year extension, but per the ordinance, you can only be a six month extension. So the motion that was passed uh, from planning commission to city council was to approve the six month extension and then revisit it if needed in six months. So this may come back before this body, 
Uh, just wanted to clarify that now so you all are aware in the future if you see it again and you wonder what's going on. Okay, okay. All right, thank you for that. So um, to our city attorney, do we have any, um, we have to go into closed session for anything tonight? They did say yes earlier. Yeah. They did say I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, there is an item that was sent out to Mayor and Council on um, Friday that is added to the agenda as item D that will need to be that will need to be added. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's for the uh, emergency funds for IT. Yes. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions on that one, that particular item? I, Madam Chair, I guess when we get into the general business portion of it, um, there's a lot of questions and uncertainties. I know that I had and, and potentially maybe my colleagues, and I know if I got some questions when it comes to IT, they might have some as well. Um, I hope at least when we get down to it in the general business portion, either there's some type of presentation or a little bit more in-depth presentation. <laughs> Okay, VJ, uh, is this, uh, is, can you speak on this? Yep, I can speak on this. So in August of, uh, uh, I think it's August 17th um, of this year, a PO was approved. It was PO number 26014. It was in the amount of $40,189 for IT expenses. Um, part of this work, I, I should say, uh, the PO itself included uh, IT hardware and services for installation and whatnot. Um, part of the items were delivered and we spent $26,749, which left still an approved balance of $13,440. In the last couple of weeks, we have been having uh, some IT difficulties here at work um, for several days. Uh, I was unable to save anything on my la or anything on my desktop. Um, I didn't. Many of us didn't have BSNA access, and then the share drive stopped working. So we were speaking with Nerds Express, who was our outsourced IT provider. Um, the items which were previously purchased had not yet been installed, and what we needed. Uh, between some servers and security licenses amounted to $15,680.72. We had the option to pay that all this year, but we were able to negotiate uh, a three-year term with Cisco for, it was three-year term with annual payments at 0% interest, which meant our uh, fiscal year impact for this year would be $5,226.91, the same impact during 21-22, and the same impact during 22-23. So while the $5,200 number was less than that that was approved in that prior PO, we wanted to make sure that City Council was aware and could vote to approve that this would, uh, because it affects future fiscal years. Um, given that we had the opportunity to take a 0% interest rate and spread it over three years, um, we thought this was the most uh, fiscally responsible thing to do. Okay. So uh, my questions are, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I have some follow-up questions. Okay, go ahead. So is that still going with the equipment that was delivered or is this going with different equipment? So we were able to use that equipment and Nerds Express will be installing that and it includes some additional equipment and uh, uh, security licenses. And my, my understanding is uh, in the middle of this year, there is some sort of security breach or hack that occurred and these licenses and this hardware will ensure that uh, we're protected against uh, those types of attacks. 
All right. Um, and as far as, because again, back when this potential contract had got voted on and passed through, um, we didn't get to necessarily ask our questions then. So will this all be covered by them under what we're already paying them and their salary? Or is this going to be an hourly rate that we're going to out go over what we've already budgeted for the IT line item? Uh, you're asking is Nurse Express going to be charging an additional uh, labor component? Is that? That's so uh, they will be doing this as part of their contract with us. The parts that we've been charged for is, are hardware and security licenses. So uh, actual hardware software considerations. Will this also enable the office at hand um, software that we have to be in a, or working and or compatible for employees to, that are working remotely to be able to answer office phones and things? Uh, that I will, that's a good question. I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll look into that with them. Okay, and I know we keep having issues with BSNA, so, and I know this is moving towards getting that resolved. Um, how many servers will they be uh, having installed to have BSNA working efficiently? Um, let me see if I can pull this up. I apologize, I'm- No not, problem. <laughs> not necessarily most savvy. Um, I mean, and, and, it, and the reason I asked those potential questions, um, of course, all of this was the reason like going to one, two, three net switching over to, or upgrading this software and things of that nature, that whole list of plethora of different items with this IP stuff was in an effort to get us to a state where we're not in the middle of an election and we lose internet. We're not in the middle of a council meeting or Sunday night the servers, you know, go down. So that's why I'm asking all of that stuff because I know different movements with different things within the organization can impact us, not necessarily immediately, but down the line. Um, and then it, I don't want it to be one of those things where uh, we say, um, uh oh, we made a mistake and then we have to revisit it again. And not cast and blame at anybody, just want to make sure we're going in the right direction with the dollars we're spending and the right direction when it comes to technology. Right. Um, let me uh, speak to Dustin, who is uh, the president of Nerds Express, and get you a clear answer on both of those items then. Okay. And then question, I know there's like about 18K from the building department that was left. Um, for the right to build a virtual BSA server, will this be enabling that as well, or is that even still an attention? And that BSNA, virtual BSNA server will allow employees to log in with their credentials, just like we have credentials on council to be able to work remotely and not um, have to have like VPN and all of that. Uh I'm not even, uh, I'm not familiar with that. So I'll have to dive into that. Uh, I'm going to throw you for a little I just had a question. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you're allowed to. I appreciate it. All right. Can you, I, I'm going to go down my list. Um, and then I can send you this stuff too afterwards or whenever, because I know you're going to be touching base with them. But I wanted to know, like, what was the implementation plan um, with this? Like, is it going to be one of those days where we get an email saying, hey, everybody, the servers are getting ready to go down because we're implementing this? And the, or is it going to be something that happens on the weekend? And then if it happens on the weekend, that's back to my other question with the overtime rate and the project stuff like that working after hours. Um, right. So what's uh, I guess first, uh, we're hopeful that it will be delivered this Wednesday but mm -hmm. uh, more likely it'll be delivered next Monday just due to the holidays. And then uh, Nerds Express said they would need two days. So it'd be working, everything would be up and running by Wednesday. Uh, their plan is to work overnight within the confines of our contract still, with the number of hours. Um, and uh, since you have a number of questions, I would be happy to set up a call between 
Dustin, you and I, if uh, you'd like to ask specific IT questions. That's fine, because I do, uh, I was, go I actually was going to ask this administration with regards to all of our virtual stuff, uh, as far as like meetings and things of that nature, would they, and, and those were things I had questions about with the contract that got voted on and passed, would they be in charge of running the virtual meetings and troubleshooting all the stuff when we have technical issues? Um, I offer my gifts and talents free of charge because I have a little bit of technical know-how and I know Troy is there too, but if you eliminate either of us out of the picture, what's the alternative to continue the city running virtually as a, um, as a municipality? So yeah, that, that call would be great, but those questions and information and stuff like that would impact my decision on this. Um, I'm not sure if my colleagues have any further questions or anything like that, but I do yield the floor. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions on this agenda item? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Okay, um, my first question is about the money. I believe you said there was $13,000 left over. Yeah. Okay. And this contract for three years is like for $15,000. Correct. Okay, so is there a reason we're not using that 13? Because the mayor himself can approve two thousand dollars to add to it and pay this that, off. Is there some sort of interest is, component to it, or what? Uh, my goal was to hold on to the money and have as much money as we have uh, collecting interest uh, within our bank. Um, when we are offered the opportunity to have a three-year zero percent interest payment. Um, I was the one who suggested to the mayor that we do that um, because it, it keeps more of our money in our pockets for longer. And while it's not a substantial amount of money, um, my thought is every little bit helps. Okay, I'm interested also in knowing if um, this IT company We'll be here tonight to answer some of these questions that um, my colleague had. They will not be tonight. Um, but uh, with that call that I set up, I would be happy to invite you as well. Okay, well, we work for the people. So we would like the people to hear what is being said too. So a call between us does not accomplish that. And uh, I just think that if we have a contract with these people, these are our IT people, whenever an IT issue comes up, IT should be available. Thank you. I oh, understand I that. Uh, we just, I mean, we're held to um, the confines of our contract. If we opt to have them here for city council, uh, we can ask them to do that, understanding that it would be at uh, a rate of one and a half times their normal rate. And I, I can text the, or call the IT individual if you'd like and ask them to call in right now though. No, I did not vote for this contract to begin with because I thought there were a lot of things missing from it. So you calling IT and charging the people more money, money that we as fiduciaries, fiduciaries are in charge of is not gonna solve the problem, so thank you. Okay, I just wanted to make sure if you want to speak to him. That's all. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else have anything on this agenda item? Okay, I have, I do have one question, DJ. Um, yep. On the contract, on the system use, maintenance, and warranties. So anything that they bring to the city uh, as far as um, equipment, there's no warranties on it? So if we go into this contract, what happens if some of the equipment may be faulty and we didn't get into this contract and they don't cover it? So that's that's an issue right here on this one. Can I mean, I know you can. A, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that last part. OK, can you explain the uh, I'm under the contract I'm under uh, item three? system use, maintenance, and warranties? 
It's going to make no warranty expressed. Are they going to cover the warranty or we have no warranty with this equipment? Because it sounds like it's as is. But these are my questions, Madam Chair. I'm going to ask that we either table this or something because this is a lot. We all, it's at least um, three of us have some major concerns with equipment war warranty on the equipment. I know when we voted on a ceremonial council meeting on the AT&T contract um, at that particular time, I don't remember if you remember or not, but Yvette Brock asked from the crowd about uh, the warranty as well. And I spoke how AT&T once they were regulated by the federal government, they only guaranteed their um, the warranty on their services up to where it terminates at, which would be like the phone room or IT closet. And after that point, you could purchase an additional warranty, but it was on the customer unless you were leasing the equipment. So that's a great question that you asked because I that that poses a great threat and concern. I got a question. Uh, wait one wait okay uh, wait one second so vj um if we can't get these questions answered tonight if this body chooses to table this because of lack of uh questions uh what's going what's going to happen to our system is the system working now or is it down the system is working we were uh given this was an emergency to make things work we were given the go-ahead when I spoke with the mayor to put this through. Okay, so actually, so they already so whether it whether or not we approve this or not is is already in the works. Then. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because we were at a point where uh, the systems were not working for a period of time, um, and we were informed that we could not necessarily keep relying on what we had. Okay. Okay, and, and when did, and this happened on uh, December the 8th? And when did this happen? The issues started December the 8th. Uh, I should say the issues that I started noticing began December the 8th. The, this may have predated my, uh, my being with the city. Um, but then by December 10th, uh, BSNA was affected, um, and by December 11th, email was affected, December 14th, email and BSNA and the heart, uh, servers were all affected. Um, it was to the point people could not work, uh, entire offices were affected. Okay. Okay, and I understand that, that uh, we have to get the systems, keep the systems working, but at the same time, our purchasing policy and what we have in place, it never seems to go along with what we do. Um, so this is like a budget amendment then. This is not a council request. This is a budget amendment because the money has already been spent, correct? Right, and we, we did put in a, a budget amendment. to be kidding me okay so i understand you you know you're very new here and it's not gearing towards you and we have to we have to keep business going but at the same time there's, there's a uh, you know that's a process that we have to follow and we're not following anything because when we out of the loop so Okay, does anybody, uh, uh, Councilman Williams? I'm done. Councilman Williams? Uh, I, that, that, that was one of the questions I wanted to come back at. They have already already been, 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 uh, started to work. Because uh, if, we, if we table it, and someone say table it, if we table it and then already started to work this, what kind of shape is that going to put us in at this point? Well, the money has already been spent. So even if we table it, I'm not sure what effect that would have on that, because this is like a, this is a this this came as a council request and it should have came as a budget amendment. So the money has already been spent. So, but but the thing that I have 
we we have we have some issues with this. We have some issues with this contract. Um, and I'm not sure. Maybe I'm I'm not sure where would we go with this. If if we table it, the money is already spent. Sure, I have a question. I'm, I'm sorry. What, were you? I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Councilman Williams, that um, I know I didn't answer your question, but um, I don't have another answer for that. Yeah, no. <laughs> huh? If, it, if, it, if it's already been spent, and I, I don't know, but I, I, I think it's, it's, it should have came to us before it was, the money was spent. Well, yes, it should have. It's been signed. Money has not been cut to them yet, but it's been signed. Who signed it? Uh, the mayor and I. Well, myself with the mayor's uh, go ahead. Madam Chair, somebody else wanted to talk. They can go ahead, but this is not the first time this has happened, okay? They do not go through council, which they are supposed to prior to making these decisions. This has come up again and again and again. And frankly, as long as we sit here and not do anything about it, they will continue to do this. Now, are we the fiduciaries or if not? Because we might as well just give up these chairs and let them do what they want to do. Well, um, <laughs> Councilman Wadley, one thing that I can say that when this, uh, not trying to go back, but when this charter was changed, that changed everything. Daily operations, even though, even though it has to come to us, daily operation falls up under the mayor. And in this instance, a it daily should, operation. Right, but in like this- you say it, this is a, this is either a budget amendment or you bring it before council before you do what you do. But you know this right. is not the first time that this has happened. When and it's they just go ahead and do what they want to do and then come back and say, okay, we need y'all to approve it now. I had a problem with that with the last administration. I said, don't make decisions for me and then come back and ask me to vote on it. All right. Okay, but wasn't this an emergency? There was an emergency. It was an emergency. Uh, right now, we're there's no telling if things are going to continue to work. And maybe they shouldn't have fired the IT. Like, we were down for, I mean, three or four days. So, so the thir the $13,000 that uh, you stated that you put to the side in the uh, money that came from the other department, so that 13 is still sitting there? We're using uh, 5,226 of that 13,440. Okay. The goal being to delay the impact. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Because it's almost seven o'clock. Yes. Hey, what what is um I, I don't have it in front of me now, but what, what is this the uh, the amount that the mayor can spend without council approval? I think it's up to I think it's five thousand. I think it's the emergency policy. It was two. I think it increased to five, if I'm not mistaken. Felicia, can you help me on that? I think it's five. Yes, I believe it's five thousand. Okay. Hey, hey uh, excuse, excuse me, y'all, uh, uh, Madam Madam. Mayor Pro Temp. Yes. Um, I know VJ is new, but I, I like to address this issue on behalf of the administration so there'll be some clarity. Um, so, in the day to day operations of the city and the course of events that occur where council is out of session or not getting ready to go in session for a while and the city runs into an emergency. And it's presented to the mayor and decisions have to be made. We're not violating the purchasing policy. We know that we have $5,000 that we can approve up to. But it, like I, I've had emergencies where I've had to move on stuff that before you guys met or before you guys, you know, got a chance to see it. And I bought before you, 
a budget amendment, which you're correct, but this was a situation where our system had been down for almost five days. I mean, the city was shut down. So DJ and the mayor had to make a decision to get us back up and running because you know, if we're down, we're useless. You know, right. in, in this day and time and technology. So I applaud them for that. And we need to understand on the day-to-day -day operations, there's gonna be some time decisions have to be made where there's an emergency that we well, we bring it before the mayor. We explain like I had an emergency on Princeton. I brought the mayor over there. He saw it. I did what I had to do. I had cement coming up. It's coming before you guys on the budget amendment in January. But I can't wait to get that road fixed and have somebody car damage or somebody fall into a hole. So we do have emergency in the course of our day-to-day -day operations that we have to make a decision on. And like I said, VJ is new. He's been here a month. So he's, he's learning his way, but they did what was correct within the purchasing agreement because he does have emergency power where we have an emergency situation that affects the safety and welfare of the city or our operations. So I just wanted that to be clarified that he wasn't out of order. The mayor wasn't out of order when he did. He just made a decision, but he just bought it to you guys in a different format. That's all. Thank you, so, Mr. Bill. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? I would just ask that I guess for items as such going forward, how we do with the rest of our departments, like for instance, if there's an issue with anything regarding roads and water and stuff, Jerome is here with us to talk about that, that we find some kind of way that the IT guys are as well. That was an issue and a question again that I wanted to ask with the contract that got voted on and passed. Would they be here during times like this to speak on these matters? I'm not blaming VJ, I'm not blaming Jerome, but they're the experts and this is their department. So they should be here to explain this to us and do some type of presentation. Even the whole police car situation, I told Chief Riley is the best thing to do would be to give us a presentation on council so that we could see it and know, you know, similar to what the fire department did because just seeing this stuff black and white and on paper and not being versed in the field of IT and then expecting us just to vote on it because we're the fiduciaries of the city, that's not fair. Right. And that's, that's all I have to say. Thank and I do think that uh, we have to probably talk to the mayor because I think that I, the IT department should be on our Zoom call. There is a technical difficulty. It's like we had two weeks ago. So, and if that company can't provide that, then maybe they need to look for another company that can provide us that 24 hour support. Okay, moving on. Um, is it, there any more questions? Because uh, it is almost seven o'clock and we can just get and start our meeting. Okay, I guess we wait for five o'clock. I'm sure you can just uh, let us know when you- um... Madam Chair, don't forget you have a closed session, but you can do it at the end too. Yeah, we're gonna do it at the end. We're gonna do the closed session at the end. Or, I mean, um, for the attorney, how, how long is it gonna be? Because if it's going to be 10 minutes, maybe we can just do it now. It's whatever, whatever the council's pleasure. Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, distinguished members of council. Nice to see everyone again. Happy Hi. holidays. <laughs> uh, we don't anticipate a long closed session. I, I believe uh, we, we would be discussing uh, one case in particular and that's uh, McGill versus Inkster and it's Wayne County Circuit Court case number 18-01362-NI okay. is to discuss the settlement offer. So we've invited uh, Eric Ladez to present on that and I expect it'll be a relatively uh, quick session, but of course we'll defer to your pleasure as to when to convene that. Okay, thank you. Um, Council, you wanna go in now or you wanted to start our, um, start our meeting and go if in? We and go, if we can go into the closed session, that'd be it's seven o'clock. Well, it's seven o'clock. So let, let's, start our, let's, start our let's start our meeting and then let's be on time. So let's start our meeting and then we do the closed session at the end, okay? Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. So Troy, uh, are we ready to start our meeting? 
Yes, we're ready to start. All right. Good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wait. Um, welcome to the Inkster City Council virtual meeting, December twenty first. Uh, call the meeting to order. Okay, so we're going to start this by um, seeing our pledge of allegiance. Can you hear? Yep. <laughs> pledge allegiance to the flag okay. of the United, United States, 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 States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation <laughs> under God, <laughs> individual. <laughs> Liberty. Liberty. Yes, all. Okay, we do have evangelist Barbara Cooper that will give us, that will say a prayer for tonight. Is she on? She's on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> all right. All right. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, this evening just to say thank you for all the many blessings that you continue to bestow upon us, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless the city of Inkster, bless everyone, our mayor, our council, treasurer, everybody that works for the city of Inkster. We're asking that you just bless them and unite this city that we can come on one accord, Lord, and just continue, Lord. All the sick, the afflicted and the bereaved, just continue to pray for everyone. A special blessing on our mayor in his time of bereavement, Lord, we just ask that you bless his family. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, I'd like to take uh, one minute in silence uh, for Mr. Benny Napoleon and his family. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, roll call. Mayor Wimberly has an excused absence. Mayor Paul Tim Howard. Here. Councilwoman Watley. I'm appearing uh, remotely from my home in Inkster, Michigan, Wayne County. <laughs> Mayor Fultown? Yes, um, in my home in Inkster. Okay, Councilman Williams? In my home in Inkster, yeah. Council? You on the call? Co I'm sorry, Councilman. Um, I can't hear you. Councilwoman Washington? I'm uh, appearing remotely from my home in the city of Inkster, Michigan. Okay, Councilman Chisholm. Appearing live from my home in Inkster, Michigan, County of Wayne. And Councilman Shaw. Here, Inkster, Michigan. Okay, we have six present tonight, Mayor Pro Tem, and we do have a quorum. All right, thank you. Approval of agenda with the um, added item D. So move, Madam Chair. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Roll call, please. Councilmember Chisholm? Yes. Councilmember Watley? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Howard? Yes. Councilmember Washington? Yes. Councilmember Williams? Yes. And Councilmember Shaw? Yes. We have six years. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> under presentations, do we get that person online or what? Uh, Ms. Ms. Tracy Ann Jennings, are you available? Good evening. Yes, I have spoken to Mr. Guasia Jones of Zincom Inc. and he should be getting on to the meeting now in order to do his presentation. So Mr. Jones, if you are on, I would ask you to state so. He would need to raise his hand um, if he's on by video or press star nine by telephone. Excuse me, George, you are on the air. 
Okay, so we're going to wait and see whether or not if Mr. Jones come in. In the meantime, we could continue. Uh, Councilman Chisholm, do you see him anywhere out there? No, oh, ma'am. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to continue to go on until he comes in. Uh, consent agenda. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. I, I know Councilman Watley had a question about the item C under the consent agenda. So, but we were, conf you know, they were, it was a little bit of confusion on if it needed to be discussed in closed session or now. So I don't know. How. Uh, Felicia, how would they go with that? I mean, it's not a closed session item um, that I know of. I don't really know particularly what her question is, but it's not a closed session item. So it's not litigation or anything like that. I don't know if it's pertaining to litigation. So um, I guess I would need a little clarity from our, um, from the lawyers who are present today, because if it's, if it's pertaining to litigation, then it might be a closed session item. It is pertaining to the litigation report we received. Okay. Well, that that would be that that would be in closed close session. session. Well, that's why I asked about it to begin with because I felt it should be in there because it's something that's being litigated right now with the city. Okay. So I didn't know if I should bring up names and stuff. Okay. So is the is is the question you have about the invoice that is presented to us? Yeah, it is a case that we were told is uh was uh, dismissed in May. Yeah, yeah that's there that's, are bills in this recent one. And I just was trying to inquire about what the bills were for if this case was dismissed because we haven't got any further information on it as far as us being in litigation with it. Okay, so that will be a closed session item. Ooh, so if it's anything, so consent agenda has to be approved. Well but if you just have a question, I'm not sure what can be changed or whatever, uh, as far as item C up under the consent agenda. So we would just go ahead and, and just continue. Felicia, is that correct? Yes, you would just go ahead and continue with the um, consent agenda. I mean, I, I don't know if it's a, is it a question that would change the, the yeah, the dollar, that's what I, so it's kind of hard to say. Are the attorneys on here? Yes. Yes, uh, good, good evening. Uh, if, if it is a question about the invoice and the bills, uh, that, that is not properly uh, a closed session item. I, I would ask council member Watley to um, state her concerns or ask her questions. And I would be happy to communicate that back to attorney Jones for a response. Uh, but if it's something other than that, then it should be something, um, you know, that, that's discussed in, in closed session if it pertains. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Wait, 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 um, Councilman Wadley. Never mind. Right. So I, I agree with, with, uh, Matt, uh, with um, Madam Clerk's response. It, it depends on the nature of the question, but if it's about the invoice, uh, the fees, things of that nature, I would invite you to ask those questions now, and I, I'd be happy to work on getting those answered for you. Okay. Uh, uh, Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Wiley, did you email okay. them? We five? have, we were told the uh, Lacani case was dismissed back in uh, a few months ago, but we're still getting billed for it. So I, I don't. I don't believe. I, I'm personally working on that case, and I, I can. I can say that that's uh, factually not correct. That case uh, has been up uh, with a uh, hearing date on our motion for summary disposition in January, and it's been that way uh, for four to six months. Uh, and I will send you the email that okay. says it's been dismissed. It was in red. Okay, so what okay. we what we're gonna we do? We can try to clarify that absolutely, but but I am uh, be happy to clarify that for you. Okay, so what we're gonna do tonight is we need a consent agenda, and any questions that you have that's up under the consent uh, agenda, 
uh, just forward it an email or and have them respond back to you, okay? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> And, and to clarify one point, uh, to be clear, there was a federal court Lacani case, which in fact was dismissed. And there is currently a state court Lacani case, which is the one I was referring to. So without seeing more detail, it could be that you were notified that the federal court case involving Mr. Lacani was dismissed, which would be 100% accurate. But it's equally accurate to say we do still have a state law case pending uh, with him with the motion up in January to dismiss. And that, that's all a part of the public court record. So I'm comfortable, you know, advising you of such now. Okay. So perhaps that's where the confusion came in. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we move forward now with the consent agenda? Can I get uh, support or for consent agenda? Support. No, you need somebody needs to move. I'm that uh, move. Okay, support. If some somebody needs to move it, and then somebody, you can oh, move it. Oh, I'm sorry. Move yes, it. I moved I don't, I don't to. Move. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Okay. And you have that? Yes. And Councilwoman Washington, are you supporting? Yes. Okay, roll call then after that. Council Member Williams? Yes. Member Fulton Howard? Yes. Council Member Washington? Yes. Council Member Shaw? Yes. Council Member Chisholm? Yes. And Council Member Watley? No. We have five yeas, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, under boards and commissions, do we have any updates or anybody need to be added? Madam Chair, I do have an, I did want to make an appointment, but I haven't, um, it's not, uh, her term is inspired, but I don't know if she wanted to recertify or to be a part of the boards and commission, Miss, Miss Walmack. Okay. If is that for the board of review? I'm sorry, yeah, Mayor. Review, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, board of review. So, so Felicia, it just expired, but I don't know if we yeah. reach back out to. I think Mario said that they do wish to continue to serve um, from a conversation that I had with him the other day. Um, she does wish, you know, to continue to serve. Okay. Well, so, um, so, so we can reappoint her. Yes. To that? Yes. Okay. Just make the motion. So move. Anybody here? Support. I support it. Okay, roll call. Council Member Chisholm? Yes. Council Member Shaw? Yes. Council Member Washington? Yes. Council Member Watley? Yes. Council Member Williams? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tim Howard? Yes. We have six yeas to appoint um, Ms. Lenora Warmack to the Board of Review. Okay. And the previous business, um, we want to, the mayor wants to retable this. So, so can someone take it, remove it from the table so we can put it back on? So make support. Okay, roll call. Council Member Wiley. Council Member Watley? Uh, no. Council Member Washington? This is removing uh, this item from the table. These business? Okay. Yeah. So I just had a quick question. Um, will we be able to water, Madam Chair. information? Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. She's speaking. The point of order. It's a, a table in motion. No conversation on table. Okay, so will we be will we be able to actually uh, receive? Oh, it's so much going on. I'm sorry. Okay, this is previous yeah. business, um, Councilwoman uh, Legina. 
Yeah, I understand that, but I'm removing it from the table. And so you need to remove it from the table before you can kind of be able to have any discussion on it. Right. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. This is what your vote is yes. to remove it from the table so you can discuss it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes. Okay. Um, Council Member Chisholm? Yes. Council Member Williams? Yeah. Mayor Potsdam Howard? Yes. And Council Member Shaw? Yes. We have five yeas to remove this item from the table. The offer to purchase three adjacent vacant residential lots, which are located on the east side of Bayhan between Trowbridge and Carlisle, as duly noted. Okay, so before the, uh, we put it, take it, put it back on the table. So do, what do we have to do with this, Felicia? You can have discussion about it now, and then somebody needs to make a motion to put it back, to put okay. it to the table again, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, so any discussion on this that we just removed from the table? Um, no, I just had a, so we'll be, a, we'll actually, the people, will they be here next time to do the presentation for this? Um, maybe VJ could actually answer that or somebody? Well, they were supposed Excuse to be- Excuse me. But I'm not Madam sure- Chair. They, yes. Madam Chair, if I may, they are on now, Mr. Guasia Jones. We've been working behind the scenes to get him on. He is on now. Okay. Thank you. That's the only question I have. Okay. Uh, Felicia, we can let him in now, right? Yes. I think he's, I think he's just got in. I just saw him get in. Okay. So this is going to be up on the uh, presentation. We was waiting for him to uh, chime in. So now he's in. So we're gonna take this back to Mr. Jones. Hey, how you doing? Good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm okay. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, my name is Guasia Jones. Um, I represent a company that we own called ZimCube um, Inc. And we build modular homes out of shipping containers and then clad them up. Um, Right now we have uh, two slated to start in Warren and nine in Detroit. And uh, now we're trying to get going here in Insta. Um, I guess you guys wanted to see uh, what we were planning to do on those two spaces. Uh, the one on Bayhan and the one on um, Trowbridge and John Daly. Yes. Um, try to figure out how to turn this camera around. Okay. All right. I mean, it's, I don't know how good the lighting is going to be. Um, so the over on John Daly, I I believe. I mean, on on Bayhan, I believe that we could do twelve to fifteen um, townhomes, um, similar to the ones that they have downtown um, Detroit. So I got an imaging of those. Um, and they pretty much would be lined up like this, um, sorry for the lighting. Um, and most of our stuff are pretty uh, cube in nature, but then we clad them up. And then over there on Bay Hand, the, the garages will be in the back like that. And also the spaces, uh, the grass area pr predominantly be in the back. But I was just trying to give you an idea of um, the idea that we were planning to do there. Um, and then just that, you know, just have the, the walk-ups be right closer to the road on Bayhan. Um, and then on Trollbridge, um, this is the concept. We wanna have three units on either side of Trollbridge, um, one where the store is now and one across it, but just the downstairs right here in these spaces, what would be commercial like uh, we were we we're trying to get like Wingstop and some of the franchises um, Jets Pizza um, that we're working on right now to come over there. So it'll be three commercial spaces below here, and then the two, the three condo style apartments, and this, they'll just be reflective, like you know, across from each other, right there on John Daly and Troll Bridge. Um, and then this is just an example of the cutting up of the boxes. Um, 
and then us how how they set up and stack up on top of each other before they all clattered up. <clears throat> so, so this is the look on Troll Bridge that we were going for, and this is the look on Bay Hand. Uh, about twelve to fifteen of these. All right, does anybody have any questions on that? Um, Madam Chair, was there supposed to be something on our screen we were looking at? Uh, he had something on his screen, but it's, it's, you couldn't really see it. But we do have the pictures that he was, I think that he was showing in our packet. Okay, okay. I just thought there was something on the screen we were supposed to see. No, I think it's the same pictures that he sent us in our packet, but it was just a smaller version. We couldn't see it. Okay. All right, did anybody else have any more questions with that? All right, so, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So uh, this uh, Councilwoman Washington, so each uh, unit will be $175,000, right, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. And how many units will there be? It's on Bayham be 12 to 15, and then on Trollbridge, it'll be, it'll be six units and um, six commercial. Okay. And for the amount for the 175,000, will you guys have programs, I guess, for? I yeah, guess. so, we, so we, we, we're, we're, we're teaming up with someone that's gonna help one with the down payment um, and trying to do a lot of first time home buyers over here and uh, try to accept a lot of programs um, and try to help to push the market here in Inkster. That's what, that's, the limitations on the performer here in Inkster was the, like the highest that we should go, try to go is 175,000. So we're trying to go to that to help push the market here in Inkster. Okay. Okay, thank you for answering my question. Okay, does anybody else have questions? Okay, I do have one, Mr. Jones. Uh -huh. uh, I think that you said you are working in Warren. Have you completed Warren or Detroit? It? No, not just yet because of the COVID, but we have pre-approved plans, sealed, stamped and sealed. So nothing is put up where we can go take a look at it then, right? No, not just yet, but it, it'll be shortly because we're going to break ground here in the next couple of uh, days. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So is that it for everybody? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, just one quick question. Yes. Um, are they familiar with the... Um, the property values thinks to right now? Yep. So you know they're somewhere around 80 and 90, right? Right, they're 80 and 90. But on Bayham, where we're building, where we're proposing to build these projects, uh -huh. there are there are four to five houses that are now valued at 175000 So we're just, like I said, once again, we're just trying to help to push the market here. In those houses you're referring to, that they have an Inkster address? Definitely Inkster address, right on the corner of, uh, it's right on the corner of Bayham going all the way up to um, Beach Daily. There's about three or four of them in a row. Okay, thank you. Because mm -hmm. does anybody else have any questions? Do we have any questions for the uh, for the audience, uh, Councilman Chisholm? <clears throat> I don't believe so. I didn't um, know huh? <laughs> we were taking questions at this point from the audience about this matters. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay, so now we are at new business. Uh, no, we're at, we still at the previous business, correct? That we just correct. We discuss on this. I make a motion that we table this matter, these matters until the next count, January 4th, 2021. Okay, so motion's been put on the floor. Support. No. 
uh, have to move for. Uh, I mean, move. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep doing move. Oh, my no. apologies. Councilman Chisholm, he moved, and Councilwoman Washington, you support it. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, I, su okay. I support. Roll, roll call to put it. Councilmember Shaw. Yes. Councilmember Williams. Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Howard. <clears throat> yes. Councilmember Watley. Yes. Councilmember Washington. Yes. And Councilmember Chisholm. Yes. We have six yeas, madam. All right, then moving along. Um, item new under new business. Item A under new business is consideration and approval authorizing the director of DPS as a representative of the city to make an application to the Wayne County Department of Public Services for necessary annual permit to occupy the right of way of county roads on behalf of the city of Inkster. Consider adopting the attached resolutions to be submitted to the Wayne County as part of the requirements to submit the permit application. So move, Madam Chair. All yeah. right, so move. Support. We have support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Roll call. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Mayor Paul Tim Howard. Yes. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Watley. Yes. And Council Member Williams. Yeah. Madam Chair, we have six yays. All right. Um, item B. Item B is consider approval of a special land use, SLUs 20-21, 20-22, 20-23, and 20-24 for a proposed medical marijuana and adult use marijuana cultivation and processing facility to be located on Bayhan Street between Dunning and the railroad tracks in the M1 Light Industrial District with the conditions noted per the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Freddie Bishop Jr. on behalf of Five Blind Mice is the applicant. So moved. It's been moved, we need support. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Do we have any discussion up under this? Madam Chair, I just want to, I just want to make a comment that I, I, I believe that this is a local applicant. Yes. And that's that's very good to have an Inkster resident or Inkster applicant applying for this type of business. That's all I have, Madam Chair. All right. Any other discussion? I'm just say amen to that. All right, Paul. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Watley. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Member Williams? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Howard? Uh, nay. We have five <laughs> yays, Madam Chair. All right, item number C. Item C is consider approval of a six month extension for special land use, SLUs 18-19, 18-20, 18-21, 18-22, 18-23, for a proposed medical marijuana multi-use facility to be located on Industrial Drive between Henry Ruff and Middlebelt in the M1 Light Industrial District with the conditions noted per the recommendation of the Planning Commission. The original approval was on October 21st, 2019, and the preliminary site plan was given approval for extension on December 14, 2020 by the Planning Commission. A. Patchum on behalf of MAD Collective is the applicant. So move, Madam Chairman. Okay, it's been moved. Do we have a support? Support for discussion. Okay, it's been up, it's been moved and supported and supported. Uh, discussion. Yes, I just wanted to state again for the record as I did during orientation and as we discussed in the planning commission. Uh, the applicant had requested a one year extension, but per the ordinance, the extension can only be granted for six months. So the recommendation was to go ahead and grant the six month extension and then revisit this uh, at the end of the six months and vote on it again if necessary. All right. Any question? Are you, you done? 
Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Any other discussion on this? Okay, roll call. May I approach him, Howard? No. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Washington? Yes. Council Member Watley? Yes. Council Member Chisholm? Yes. And Council Member Shaw? Yes. Madam Chair, we have five yays. All right. Uh, item D. I item have a, a, I'm sorry, I don't. I'm, I'm sorry, we need item D, you said? Yes. Yes. Okay. Item D, uh, which was an addition to the agenda, and the items were uh, emailed out to council. Um, consider approval of a, uh, to authorize the city treasurer to make an emergency IT expenditure in the amount of 5,226.91 annually for FY 2021, FY 2122, and FY2223 for a total of 15,680.72 annually, $3,484.61 will be dispersed from the budget line 101-228-7400 and 1,074.230 will be dispersed from budget line item 101-371-727-000. Zero zero zero. Okay, it's been it's been uh, on the floor. Is somebody make a uh, somebody going to move this item and support. All right, Felicia. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. So it. Okay. Uh, I I have something I wanted to uh, bring up as well, um, regarding the the last vote that we did dealing with the retail and medical licensing parent. Um, at our last meeting, we passed a number of marijuana related zoning ordinances and business licenses. And we decided to discuss and pass the marijuana related matters as one big package. Um, I believe we made a mistake because the fact of passing a new micro business license along with the unlimited recreational retail stores that we approved will be placed in any business district, uh, which makes a conflict since recreational retail stores can be placed in any business district, um, including in the entertainment district with a thousand feet buffer from any other type of marijuana facility and micro businesses can only be in the entertainment district that could potentially have an effect on micro businesses in the city of Inkster. Um, recreational retail stores are usually larger and profitable, which that could actually impact us with bringing micro businesses to the city of Inkster. Um, current business owners may end up just opting in two um, opening up the retail stores instead of the micro businesses. And I believe it's really important to try to help Inkster residents break into the new industry. And also it gives us, uh, city of Inkster residents, at least 51% ownership into it. Um, to also reinvest back into the community. So, um, in order for us to encourage those build, build, building owners in the entertainment district to to house a micro business owned by Insta residents instead of rec stores or recreational retail stores, I believe we should pass a moratorium on accepting recreational retail store applications for licenses that's excluding micro businesses for two years. Um, I believe this would give our residents a chance to get through the city and state licensing process, and that would get their micro businesses open in our entertainment district. Um, in the two years, we could, I, I think we can revisit this moratorium after we see how the impact is with the additional micro businesses in the city and then evaluate it from there. Um, the three medical marijuana dispensary licenses have already applied to the city for recreational retail store license. So the city where we see, of course, the revenue stream from those three businesses 
plus the additional revenue, of course, from the new business, uh, micro businesses that will be created in the city. It's important to know that the recreational retail stores and the micro businesses generate the same exact tax revenue of approximately $86,000 annually for the city. So I think it is better for our city to have more micro businesses, in my opinion, um, than recreational retail stores because they would have less of an impact on the city. It'll allow INCSA residents to um, have part, part ownership those people will be able to give back to the city and it could be located in one area and we'll still receive the same amount of revenue entity with the smaller micro businesses and we can have multiple amount of those in one building. So I move that we place a two year moratorium on accepting recreational retail store business license and that's excluding micro business license ap applications. I support for discussion. Um, yes, ma'am. Madam, um, may I approach him? Yes. Gary Caldrag, mind if I chime in for just a second? Um, to do a moratorium, first of all, moratoriums are not um, normally um, approved by courts, certainly not for two years. Um, the length is too long. But more, but more importantly, this would um, actually be required an ordinance to, to prohibit uh, these facilities for a length of time which means you really need to go through the ordinance process, having a public hearing um, and the two readings and so on. So we haven't had a public hearing yet. I know normally we have a public hearing with the first reading. So really, if you wanna move ahead with this, it'd probably be best to push it ahead for a schedule for a public hearing down the road and um, do the proper presentation of this as an ordinance and go from there. Okay, that's, um, and, and, and as far as the moratorium, I know we usually, I mean, we, we haven't done it for two years. It's only been like for a year if we've done any moratoriums, correct? And okay. even a year is stretching it. They, they you know, courts um, prefer six months to be truthful. Six but, months, um, okay. But a year is pushing it. But you can, there have been a, occasions when a year has gotten through. But as I said, this requires an ordinance and to do that, we need to, uh, you know, have our procedure followed for an ordinance. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I still okay. have something that. Okay, go ahead, um, Mr. Chisholm. I know in the past we've done moratoriums on used car lots. I don't even know if there's a, uh, a, a time limit on the used car lot moratorium that we extended. We did have a moratorium on anything medical marijuana that expired in January. It just didn't get renewed and it was one year. So I'm sorry, but I beg to differ with that because at that time, nobody advised us that we shouldn't put a moratorium on it or that we should create an ordinance and go through a public hearing process and all of that. I could be wrong, but I beg to differ. Um, also with what was said, and I still express disappointment in how the vote was taken because I spent three hours of my time meeting with the mayor and we had multiple conversations about this stuff. We've been tabling this since August or September and it got pushed through anyway. The language went from being change, change, change and amended to what we all thought was, well, I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna speak for everybody. What some council people thought was a compromise on the table. And then in the meeting when Councilwoman Wiley stated to the mayor that she was trying to minimize the footprint and that's what we've been voicing, he stated that was never the intent. That changed my entire view on all of this. This is why I support this moratorium for the simple fact that I feel like I was lied to. I feel like the public was mm -hmm. lied to. I feel like some of my colleagues who voted for this wasn't quite under, under the impression of, or understood it in full because I don't always understand this stuff in full and I have to read it over and over and over and get an understanding of it. So again, I understand where uh, Councilman Washington is coming from. The, a pressure was applied from the public. I was stopped at stores. I've been stopped at gas stations. I've been called on the phone. People are emailing, asking information about what did we vote on? What do we do? Business owners are saying the same thing. They want to know what's going to happen to their property value because the way it was voted on, the buffers weren't in there properly because it's a race to the finish. Who has the most money first? Why will micro businesses? or people, if they could get a rec license, why would they open a micro business to benefit this community if they could just benefit for themselves? If you really look at the language, that's what's there. 
I don't care what anybody says when they're trying to challenge me on that. We could go toe to toe. You could read it for yourself, but I am standing firm on my beliefs in this. And this is why I support this, what uh, Councilman Washington is doing to undo a vote that she wasn't fully aware of when she took it. Um, oh. Uh, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Are you finished? Go ahead. So I, I just, uh, you know, speaking to the entertainment district, because I went over with that with her, how we even came up with the entertainment district and the master plan and things of that nature. So again, this is why I support this, because if the rec licenses or persons who obtain them were to come into um, business first before those who might not have the same finances and resources that would want to open a micro business, there's no micro businesses in the city of Inkster. The social equity piece that we put in there, it doesn't even matter anymore. What do we spend all of this time for? Why, you know, why do we write these ordinances in the first place if we weren't going to do it the right way? And I yield the floor to my colleagues. Okay. Um, Madam, Ch Madam okay. Chair. Wait, wait, one second. Uh, Felicia? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now in order for her I'm going to do what the attorneys recommend for us to do for right now to protect the city. And then we can always come back as an ordinance to change that. Thank but you. if she's trying to change her, are you trying to change her, her vote? Is she trying to change her vote? No, I said, more, I said a more, I said a moratorium for what, if he said, if he said we cannot do one year and we can only do, I mean, we can't do two years. We can year, then I would like to move to, to do the moratorium for the one year then. Okay, so one year, if you if, if you listen to what he said, one year is kind of dangerous. Six months. It, it, it normally customarily has been um, the attorney advisors for six months in the past. Correct. Six months. So. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. So we, if that's something that this body wants to do, then it would have to be, we have to go on an attorney's recommendation of six months. Because the reason why I asked because of uh, Councilman Chisholm saying that maybe you, I mean, in your vote, you didn't understand or whatever. So up it's under not, consent no, agenda, if if you was the maker, maybe you could have changed your, your uh, vote on that if that's what you wanted to do. So that's why I was asking no. the clerk. No, what, you cannot. You can't do that. You have to make a motion to do that. And I'm speaking about a moratorium, not changing the vote. Yeah, she okay. wants to do it. She doesn't want to change her vote. She okay. wants to place a moratorium on recreational retail stores, business licenses, except for micro businesses for however many years or months she wants to Okay, so just to do it. Madam okay, Chair. so and Go again, ahead. and again, the reason why I said that is it gives the micro businesses time to do their applications. So with the thousand foot buffer, so we can actually have businesses instead of everybody rushing to do the retail, the recreational retail stores that knocks out any, that knocks out any micro business. That gives time for the micro businesses to come in and, and that gives the ownership, the interest to the city of Inkster residents. That's kind of the biggest to the reason why of doing this is to make sure that we can have our own people be involved in this micro mm -hmm. in this uh, recreational and marijuana business. Okay, Councilor Michelle. You know, and I and I agree with that because that's what we definitely want, and that's what the intent for me was. And and I would like to introduce to the maker of the moratorium if we can get the recreational part as 50% of Insta ownership as well as the micro business. Do because that. that's what we truly want, that's what I would truly want is making sure that Insta residents have a footprint in this business, regardless if it's micro business or recreational. Can we get the 51% legacy of Insta residents in the recreational part? Would that be acceptable to the make of the motion of the moratorium? Would that be changing the ordinance that was approved two weeks ago? And I think it would be. You can't do that. You have to go out and do another ordinance or or uh, or making an uh, amendment to the to the uh, ordinance that's already out there. Madam Chair, that's what I'm talking about. As the moratorium, as we look at the moratorium, it has to come back up. 
Uh, Madam Chair, just to piggyback on Councilman Shaw, or just to get some insight um, with changing that and the social, that's because that falls under the social equity piece. Um, and when he's talking about the rec, unfortunately, it would have to go through the proper steps like a public hearing and everything again through planning commission and then come to council. So we can't unfortunately impose that um, that that request. It sounds great. <laughs> it's a great idea. But that's we all can't can't that it's request moratorium. But you can with the micro, correct? Because that was already in the social equity program that was attached to the micro business in the original ordinance, correct? Yes, and we've already voted on that. So basically, I mean, that's there. But if it wasn't there and that was something we tried to opt in in the future, we basically would have to do what we've been doing, tax amendments and things of mm -hmm. that nature, having a public hearing again, and then two readings at council meeting. So um, at this particular point, like I said, it sounds great, but we just can't impose that on a moratorium regardless of us revisiting it or not. Because once the moratorium is lifted, that mm -hmm. particular language no longer exists. And if in, anybody in the city never got the option to opt into it, they didn't have enough time and things of that nature, it's pretty new. So, but it's just too much legal um, jargon or mumble jumbo in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Felicia. Right now, the motion that I have on the table is to place a moratorium on recreational retail stores, um, businesses, business license, excuse me, except for micro businesses. I have for two years. I don't know if the maker of the motion wanted to look at changing that in reference to what the um, attorney's office said. But yeah. right now, that's what I have on the floor. Ma okay. Madam Chair. Wait one second. Yes. Go ahead. Now I think our attorney is on the on the on the line. Yeah. Now my question would be to him of making that recreational piece of fifty one percent as we go through a public hearing. You the moratorium to, has to come back up. You'd have you still. You'd have go to ahead. go amend you to make the fifty percent fifty one percent requirement for a local ownership, you'd have to go back and amend the ordinance, which means having public hearings, two readings, drafting the language, those sorts of things. Your moratorium is acting to try to um, buy you some time so that you can do that. Okay. That's um, what I was saying, that it's gonna come back up again. You'll have to do this. The moratorium will stop the um, progression of new stores temporarily while council considers if they want to make other changes to the amendment, to the ordinance, excuse me, which could include yes. okay. an okay, ownership, yeah, that's which could be include rezoning certain things, whatever the council decides is appropriate. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I got it. I understand it. So yeah, I'm, I, I can do that. I can do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, but now she, the maker of this motion has to, uh, I, will, we, I will refer you to, do, uh, to go with the city attorney, what he said, six months? No, he said he, said he believed he, he should do six months. He said usually in the past they've done a year. So okay. if, if he can break it down to us a little bit clearer, then yeah, maybe so. Okay, attorney, uh, uh, here, can you uh, explain that again? Certainly, certainly. Moratoriums are not always enforced by the court. Um, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, six months is more likely to be enforced than one year. It's not impossible to enforce one year. I'm just advising counsel that th these are what, the, what happens in court. I can't predict what's gonna happen in court, but the history is six months is, is more, um, looked upon more favorably than one year. One year is not impossible though. Two years is certainly out of the question. Okay, one, I'll do. I'm sorry, I couldn't catch that. One year, Madam oh. Clerk. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. If everyone is through, I would like to uh, be in support of that one year I'd like to go to because I've not always been comfortable with our attorney decisions about things. And I don't feel we've already, we've always had a uh, unbiased 
opinion from them, but that's just me, okay? So we have done a moratorium exactly for marijuana for a year the last time. Is that not correct, yes. Madam Clark? Did we have any intervention from courts or anything like that? That is correct. It was for one year. Okay. One year. And, we, and we had no intervention from courts or anything of that nature. But should we, we would expect to have competent representation to repel all challenges. Okay. So barring that, I'm in support of Councilwoman Washington's uh, moratorium on uh, any of these businesses continuing. And in that interim, maybe we can find a way to actually do what the ordinance was supposed to do in the first place, reduce the fingerprint or the footprint of marijuana in the city, which is what most people have been calling me about since this vote was taken. That's it. All right, so we, uh, so Felicia, is the motion six months or a year? One year. Okay. So any more discussion on this? I, I just had a question. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't see no problem with it, but I'm just, I, the problem I do have is, you know, she wants to come back and she was not the one who made the motion that, that the, uh, on the, on the thing that passes. So does she have the right to come back and make another type of motion on the moratorium? Okay. Yeah, she, she can make a motion on the moratorium, on the moratorium yes. Okay. I Whether she has to anything to do with that prior motion or not, this is just to place a moratorium. All right. All right. Um, any more discussions? So that don't change. You saying that don't change the motion? That just she's get a moratorium and putting the time limit on it. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, Councilman Williams. That just gives again people more time to bring micro businesses because if we do the recreational storefronts that can't sit out because of a thousand feet buffer, we want to make sure that the residents and have a fair chance in having ownership. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, I agree. Felicia, can you read that motion again before we take a vote so everybody can understand what they're voting on? Sure. The motion is to place a moratorium on recreational retail store business licenses, except for micro businesses, for one year. Okay, so it's been moved and it's been moved and supported, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, roll call. Councilmember Williams? Yes. Councilmember Chisholm? Yes. Councilmember Washington? Yes. Mayor Paul Tim Howard? Yes. Councilmember Shaw? Yes. And Councilmember Watley? Yes. Madam Chair, we have six yes. Okay, so that's going to be item E then, right? Okay. Yes, that's item E. All right. Uh, we, we are in public participation. We are public participation. Um, citizens, uh, one, are limited to one minute. Uh, please raise your hand by pressing the hand button or star nine to... Uh, if you dialed in by telephone. And Madam Chair, I see Mr. Bivens has a statement or a question. Um, Madam Mayor Pro Tip, I have an announcement to make on behalf of Mayor Wembley. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. On behalf of Mayor Wembley and the city of Inkston, we would like to thank uh, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans for donating masks to the city of Inks to all residents. We have in possession uh, thousands of masks for the residents of the city of Inkster. And at this opportunity, um, at this time, we're taking the opportunity to offer these masks to council. Uh, there are 1,400 in a box, four in a pack, where I, you can come to my location or email me and set up a meet to get them, where you can pass them out to your constituents in your district but at this time, and the mayor will be coming forth once he returns to work with further announcements on where he will be passing out the mask himself. But we just like to take this opportunity on behalf of the city of Inkster to thank our Wayne County Executive Warren Evans for donating these masks to the city of Inkster. Oh, thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Hmm. 
I have All a right. comment to be read into the record, um, Council Member Chisholm. All right, ahead, Madam Clerk. Okay. It says, hello, my name is Adrian Monk, and I have a public comment I want read and asked at tonight's meeting. This was submitted before 4 p.m. Hello, my name is Adrian Monk. I'm a City of Redford resident. I have a question for Mayor Wimberly. Mayor Wimberly, do you care to be honest with the public and City Council and tell us about why you had a bench warrant issued for your arrest? In 2017 for Wayne County Circuit Court, it is important you tell everyone about this bench warrant. Please be transparent. Thank you for your time. Okay. All righty. And then we, at this time, um, Madam Chair, we do have three people who are on that have raised their hand by that feature again for callers who may have dialed in, press star nine. I'm getting ready to unmute the first caller, Madam Chair. Um, okay. please, state, please state your name for the record. And again, you have one minute to speak. Hello, my name is uh, Charles Blackwell. I found it very funny that uh, Jerome Bivens wanted to stick up for the mayor and wanted to clarify something. How about Jerome B Bivens clarify to the public why he had a $5,000 water bill at his personal house and he runs the water department? How about he clarifies that? Second thing I wanted to state was council member uh, Revan Williams at the last meeting you said something about Zoom meetings and I almost fell out the chair when you said it. You stated that the public should be able to access these Zoom meetings. Attorney Neil Piach argued in front of the Honorable Judge Groner with my lawsuit that the city of Inkster shouldn't be allowed to allow the public to show these meetings to the public on Zoom. And you had the audacity to state that the public should. So you should tell Neil, because I see him on this meeting right now, uh, while he's arguing the court, this frivolous argument that the public should not be able to get onto these Zoom meetings and see it visually. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to the next uh, caller. Again, please, you have one minute, please. Once you're unmuted, please state your name for the record. Good evening, Council. Good evening. My name is Good evening. My name is Robin Broadnax. Um, I have uh, two grievances currently. Um, I've spoken with Councilwoman Watley about uh, the semi trucks that are taking a route, uh, an illegal route around my house. They have been driving on my sidewalk. They uh, have tore up the street on Princeton and Wellington, where my home is. And I've also talked to Officer Wall about uh, illegal dumping in the home behind me. Uh, there is uh, couches, um, a lot of clothing, a lot of drug usage. It's an abandoned house. And I've been talking to them about that. And that's it. Okay. Um, I think they can, uh, Councilman Chisholm, do you have her number where Officer Dawn can get back with her or um, Councilman, uh, Councilwoman uh, Wadley? You have her number where they can relay that information? Yes, we have, we have her back information, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. And just mm -hmm. for the... Uh, just for the record, she's been touch, been put in touch with all three departments that um, have something to do with her complaint, DPW, police, and Officer Wall. So, uh, yeah, okay, that's it. All right, next caller. All righty, and caller, state your name for the record, and you have one minute. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Octavia Smith, City of Inkster resident. Um, I want to say good evening to everyone and also state quickly, Western Wayne Family Health Center, we do offer free COVID testing and free flu shots at our center at 2700 Hamlin Boulevard. We want to um, ask a question about, is Inkster participating in the pay-as-you-stay program 
um, that's offered in the city of Wayne, um, in this um, in Wayne County. And also, last question: I had a couple of residents ask me about the gift cards that the mayors generally give out during this holiday season, and they was wondering if um, anyone is receiving any of those gift cards for this year. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I will let the mayor know that and he can respond back to you because I'm not sure if the gift cards are being given out this year or not, okay? Yes, they are, um, Madam Chair. Are? Um, it will be on October 23rd um, at the rec complex, I believe, and I'm sorry, I don't have a time. December 23rd? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. All righty. Uh, next caller, you have one minute. Please state your name for the record. Hi, this is Yvette Brock. I just got one um, quick thing, and it's really about the accountability um, of the board and the administration. It's a little disheartening that uh, we keep occurring this occurrence of spending money and then asking for permission. Um, I don't think tonight's occurrence was really about tonight. It was about all along this is keep happening. So at some point, I think that it will use the board um, to hold the administration accountable, accountable for all this spending and then asking on the backhand side, yes, it's an emergency, however, it's not about this time. It's about the constant lack of respect they have for the board and the ordinance that says you must follow these steps. So that concerns me. Um, just something to think about and happy holidays to all of you guys and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you too. Happy holidays to you. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm muting the next caller. Please state your name for the record. You have one minute as well, also. So, Kofense Mandisa, or K for short. So, I just want to uh, just t talk about, discuss the Inkster's uh, COVID response plan. I'm not sure. Uh, what the status of uh, with that, but just want to make sure that, that everyone is aware is that we, if the city, if we don't have a solid COVID response plan, emergency plan, and how we're going to bring employees back uh, to work when they come back, uh, how we're going to uh, tr treat employees who refuse to take the vaccine, because there might be some that do that. Uh, so we don't have our employee handbooks updated with how we handle flu shots, because it's similar to how the vaccine shots or how you handle flu shots. Uh, that could open us up uh, for for negligence and lawsuits as well. So just want to make sure that 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 uh, you know that's in people's forefront. But also I have a a COVID dashboard that uh, goes over you know uh, the state and the numbers and, and the figures. So we're kind of on top. We can manage a risk by having the data and stats and 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 use that to help manage the risk. That I open up to the city as well. Uh, so there's some things I just want to raise to the city that I think I can. Uh, be able to help and provide free of charge because I am a resident of the city that has one off my services. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do we have and any more? Yes, we have at least three more going to the next caller now. Um, once you are unmuted, please state your name for the record. You have one minute. Oh, let me try again. Okay. There we go. Good evening, everyone. This is Sergeant Wall. Um, actually, I don't know how to take my take my hand down. I did wave uh, when Ms. Broadnax was speaking. I wanted to assure her that her complaint with regards to the debris has gone into our contractor. Uh, for cleanup, my guess is that the weather kept them from that today, but they do have the list and her issues will be addressed with regards to all the debris. Thank you. All righty, uh, next caller, you have one minute. Please state your name for the record.
Good evening. This is Gina Wilson Stewart. And first of all, I want to make sure I say um, Merry Christmas and everybody uh, have a great holiday and joyous season. But my, my point I wanted to make today is when I'm out on during the week passing out uh, Telegram newspapers, I do notice that there's still numerous of people not wearing their mask and going into the different establishments. I just want to remind everyone that this COVID is, is definitely real and we need to definitely take it serious. Um, I just want to do a reminder to just wear your mask if it's not for yourself, it's for the person that you're running into when you're out and about. And uh, they're doing the six feet away most places. However, they're talking to each other and they don't have a mask on. So I just wanted to remind everybody to be safe. Um, we publish those numbers um, every other week in the Telegram so we can see how we're doing. And it, it looks like it was at a low, but we know it only takes a day or so for the numbers to change drastically. So I just wanna encourage everyone to still make sure their family members are wearing their masks when they go out. And I'm glad that uh, Wayne County Evans um, is gonna give out masks to the residents of Inkster. That's it I have for me today. Thank you. Happy holidays to you. Okay. All right. We have our next caller. State your name for the record, and you have one minute. Hi, this is uh, Pastor John Hearn, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to commend the council on the actions that they took tonight. Uh, that truly shows that you have the heart of the of the citizens that that your heart with the actions that you took. So I just want to commend you all for that. And secondly, I would like to uh, mention that on January the 14th, the Western Wayne County NAACP is going to be continuing with its listening tours, dealing with the police chiefs in Western Wayne County regarding traffic stops and the, uh, and, and the arrests, uh, in particular dealing with people of color uh, as a result of uh, this comes on the, on the heels of the, uh, the George Floyd situation. And if there's anyone in the listening audience that has had any encounters, this next listening tour is going to be hosted uh, by the police chief of Dearborn. He'll be present at Dearborn Heights and I believe Allen Park will be present as well as Belleville. If any of our citizens have had any encounters with these departments, this is a time for you to share your grievances because we're trying to get them to change their policies when it comes down to dealing with us while driving while black. Thank you for your time. Okay, um, thank you and happy holidays to you. Thank you. The uh, next caller, please state your name for the record and you have one minute. Hi, this is uh, Paris Jones. How is everybody? Happy holidays to y'all. Um, I have one announcement and then one question I'm trying to be enlightened on. Um, so I'll make the announcement first. The uh, Inkster Community Resource and Referral Center has free formula. So if you guys could inform uh, the people in your um, district that we do have baby formula available for um, infants and we have some of like the um, small packages as well of Pampers. Um, and then secondly, I was wondering what is the process that needs to be taken to um, I guess kind of open the eyes to some things that are going on in Hamlin Estates. I know it's private property, so I don't know what the city can do, um, but the residents are kind of going through an Inkster housing situation. And we have, I've been contacted by several residents over the past couple of months who are even in jeopardy of losing section eight vouchers and things of that nature. Um, unfortunately, the, the property manager, she is a relative of Benny Napoleon. So I didn't want to bother her at the current moment. Um, so I was wondering if anybody can enlighten me on, you know, what rights do they have with it being private, uh, private property? Um, Madam Chair. Matt, <laughs> go ahead if you have. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of times with situations as such, um, there's a chain of command that can't be followed. If they're filing complaints with the business owner, the property owner, and they're not responsive, you go to the next level. 
uh, whether you follow with the Better Business Bureau, whether you follow with the Health Department, Wayne County Health Department, whether if you go on to Mich Michigan.gov and you can actually look all the information up if you have to follow with, I'm not sure if it would be Michigan OSHA or not um, at this time. And it's, it would take me some time to look that up. But if you have to, um, if you're not getting any response from the county, Wayne County uh, Health Department, that I would say that would be your first step if that is the type of issue that's going on over there. If it's something criminal, contact the police department. They should have all the resources as well at the front desk. And if words come to words, you can always contact your state senator or state representative office to get involved and advise you on the proper steps to take uh, with who to contact up the chain of command. Um, I'm, she's muted, so let me see if she heard me. And got Paris, it. Hear me? Yep, okay. I got it. Thank you. No problem. All right. Thank you. And we have uh, two more at this time, Madam Chair. Uh, okay. Caller, state your name for the record, and you have one minute. Good evening, Shirley Hankerson. I just want to thank the council uh, for their support and helping the, our city. Um, with the marijuana um, dispensaries, because it's important. We always end up being consumers and it's time for us to be owners of businesses. And we've been here forever. So if, we, if something is coming into the city, we should have the first opportunity. And I appreciate all of you taking that vote uh, for that moratorium for at least a year. And if it means we have to extend it for another year to make sure our citizens get what they deserve, then we must do that as well. And I just wanna thank everyone again. Thank you. We do have a final caller, uh, Madam Chair. They have their hand raised. I will unmute, uh, I can unmute them. They, look, oh, you know what? They must've dialed in by telephone because it says merge with audio. So okay. um, getting ready to, oh, never mind. Sorry, it gave all of these phone numbers. It's Sam's Galaxy A20. Um, I'm assuming they connected to our call and when they gave them the option, their audio isn't on. If okay. on phone or something like that, which it is Sam's Galaxy in the bottom left-hand corner, it should give you an option to connect to audio because we can't unmute you at this time. And if worse comes to worse, please email our city clerk your comments or concerns at frutlich at cityofinkster.com. And that's F-R-U-T-L-E-D-G-E -E at cityofinkster.com. Because Sam's Galaxy A20, um, if you're looking in the participant list, it does not have a microphone next to it. It only has a video option and a raised hand. And so I can't unmute them because I don't have a telephone number. Oh, okay. that, I think, is that Sammy Ward Bay? Sammy, if that's you, can you give us a thumbs up? We can't hear you. Um, your audio isn't connected, sir. Okay, so he, st he still hasn't got connected? No, he hasn't. Um, okay, so he, can just, he can just email Felicia with his concerns then. Right. I'll make sure I get you the email address, Sammy, because we can't hear you. Okay, do we have any more? Okay. Nope, that's it, Madam Chair. All right. Okay, City Clerk. Yes, um, public and um, mayor and council, I have a statement that I want to read tonight. Um, I've been pretty disturbed by some things that have been going on. And so I just want to place on the record that Charles Blackwell's constant emails and phone calls have become, in my opinion, harassment. I am in fear of him. I have 180 emails from Charles Blackwell in which some are inappropriate communications that are not for your requests related or otherwise properly related to my job function as city clerk. He continues to email me not only during business hours, but after hours and on weekends, in addition to numerous calls to my office at city hall. He now has my personal cell phone number and my home address. I believe based on these actions that he is targeting me. He has used up a considerable amount of employee and departmental resources and time responding to his numerous and excessive FOIA requests. 
In fact, the city has already paid approximately $15,000 in attorney fees to defend against the foyer and open meetings lawsuits he filed against the city. He is harassing and I believe demonstrating stalking tendencies. I'm in fear of the unknown because of his erratic and unpredictable behavior. In this day and age, we have seen too many tragic cases where public officials have been harmed. I have placed my employer, the city attorney, my family, and now the public on alert that I am in fear for my safety as a result of the ongoing and unrelenting conduct of Charles Blackwell. Thank you. Thank you. City Treasurer. Is he still on? VJ? Okay, I guess he's not on. All right, we're going into uh, council communications. Um, Councilman Williams, did you have anything? Um, can you come back to me for a minute? Come back to oh. me, Madam Clerk. I mean, Madam Clerk. How Councilwoman Washington. Um, just want to say um, happy holidays to everybody and hope that you enjoy your Christmas with your family or your family and friends. Also, big shout out to the Inkster police. Um, I seen today on the news, they were on the news for some, you know, for passing out uh, $50 Kroger gift cards to people who were, um, they were stopping instead of giving them speeding tickets, they gave them Kroger gift cards. So I just wanted to say thank you to the Inkster Police Department uh, for spending your day reaching out and building a connection with the community. And thank you for all you do in the community and leaving a lasting impression on our residents. All right. Okay, Councilwoman Wiley. Uh, yeah, I have a several uh, things. First of all, is anyone from the uh, police administration on this call? Chief uh, Riley or the assistant chief or the next in line? Chisholm, do you see anybody on? I don't. I was just scrolling through the list itself. Um, the only person from PD that I know of in administration, if you will, is Sergeant Wall. And that's because she did speak earlier. But other than that, I do not see any of those names. Okay, well, just for the record, I have a couple of questions. Um, no good deed goes unnoticed. And I received a uh, picture of a what the uh, complainant or the person said was a sprinter van. And um, I uh, was going to inquire if this is one of the vehicles that the council approved. Does anybody know if that's the case, if this is one of the vehicles? Because I don't remember that being one of the ones listed. And I wanted to know, uh, they were wondering where it came from. I guess I'm wondering where it came from now, if there's uh, no one to answer. And also if the vehicles that were um, ordered or were approved have arrived at the PD yet. Okay, that was the PD question. The second question is regarding the rec center. I'd like to know what the status of the rec center is and I'd also like to know who approved the large gathering last Saturday at the rec center. I thought the but rec center was closed. I didn't know. I did too, but apparently it's not because there was a rather large gathering. They said the parking lot was full. There were hundreds of people inside and I was getting bits and pieces from people because remember no one can keep a secret here in Easter that it was some basketball tryout so either we're closed or we're not. And if we're not, who's responsible for not following the governor's order? What do we do in that instance? Okay. okay. Something that we'll hmm? care with. That's something that we should have a talk with the mayor on that one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I thought the, I thought it was closed. 
me too, like I said, but when people, you know how it is when citizens start calling you and you, ex they expect you to know what's going on in the city. And I've said it before, because of the transparency issue I have, I never know what's going on. So when I get these opportunities, I go ahead and ask. Um, huh? the, no, the next thing. Wait one second. That, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not you, I was talking to. No, uh, I, I want, I want to, uh, wait, 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 wait till she gets finished and I come back to you. Go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Watley. Okay, the next thing is um, I had sent an email about the uh, tax bills and people have been receiving them. But the people who ask about the tax bills were the ones that want to pay, want to pay them before the end of the year. But they need some sort of receipt to put with their taxes. So if you're gonna mail your information in and everything, is there any mechanism in place where you can get that receipt to put with your taxes for next year. I mean, even after the COVID is over and it's been processing, can we go back to City Hall and get that receipt you need to put with your taxes when you're paying them all in the same year? And the treasurer is not on either. Okay, that's three. Here we go. Ma Madam, uh, Madam Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Council Mawali, but he, the treasurer is having um, issues with his microphone. Um, so he wanted me to make everyone aware that he is having issues. And also that um, if you drop your payment off at City Hall um, in the Dropbox, they will be processing the tax payments over the holiday closure. Yeah, but how will we get that receipt? Because most banks don't send you back your checks like they used to. <laughs> you have to contact your bank and ask you to give you a specific copy of that check. So these people want that receipt so they can put it with their taxes when they do their IRS stuff which is what you would normally get if you were paying. Okay, anyway, uh, the next one is that I uh, would like to know if anyone is aware of a project that's going on. On channel two or something the other night, there was a man who did a presentation about a uh, city project that was going up that had houses and playscapes and stores and all of this stuff. And I'm totally unaware of it. Does anyone from council have information on this? They had no one from the city with him, you know, how they usually do, they contact the city. So um, I wanna know first if anybody else saw this or am I just hallucinating again? Or does anyone know about this project that they're doing in Inkster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, no, I, I don't. I speak on I've the seen, I've seen it. My district, uh, so I, get, I speak to her. Okay, well, hold on. He he'll speak to her. Uh, you want him to talk right now, uh, Councilman Wiley? I, well, I would like to hear from uh, Councilwoman Washington first. She said she saw it. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, I believe that's uh, Keno Smith. I believe he did a presentation uh, for us. What, what was it? Was it the last council meeting we had? Right. No. Okay. okay, but I do not recall us voting on proceeding. I mean, there's so many other processes that you go through before you make a, a presentation on the news. So I'm just wondering what, what phase this project is. Now I'll hear from uh, the other person. Okay. Yeah, only thing I remember was a presentation. Yeah, I didn't see it on TV, so I'm I'm not I'm I didn't see it, but I, I guess we can pull it up. Uh, Councilman Williams, do you want to speak on that? You want me to do all mine at once and just talk on that right now? Okay, uh, Councilman uh, Woman Watley, were you done? Well, no, but I didn't get any answers on yeah, any of this, so that's I, fine. I, I that's it. fine. He, 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 okay. Go ahead. Okay, um, Councilman Williams, go ahead. No, she says she got some more. I'll wait till she get, till she get through. Let her go ahead, Madam Chair. Okay. Councilwoman Wally, you would like to continue? Nope. I'm cool. Thanks. Okay, okay. Uh, Councilman Williams. Okay, the um, 
I, I don't know. I, I don't know why it went on the air, but I uh, I, I, I do know that the, the that program, every council, I think, knows that they're, they're trying to do some development over there. They came out and they spoke to us on the development and and they gave each of us a uh, outline of, of what they, the ideal, what they're trying to do. OK, over on that land. And so the veterans, you know, by the veterans, it's uh, added on to what the veterans trying to do over there on that land. And remember, the mayor talked about it at the last meeting about this trying to put like a little small grocery store and stuff like that. And, and then how, how the people that they're going to put over there, the, the, uh, the houses or, or whatever they're going to put over there, they, they, how they're going to how they're going to invest into their, their own businesses right there. Um, we'll give her an outline more of because I think she should have had a, 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 they gave us a picture. I mean, most of us got the picture. I don't know why y'all didn't get it because it was getting in our packages of what they talk about, idea of what they're trying to, to, um, to put over there. Now, I, I don't know if it was or not, uh, how far the mayor and him have got with that. Okay. I've talked, I've talked with him once. Okay. I'm concerned. Okay. Some more concerns I, I've talked to him about. That uh, on that on that land over there, so it ain't nothing. That, when it came out, it wasn't something new. I think, I think, you know, we can't, you know, if he want to go there and blast it in the news before he goes, you know, get it all squared away with us, you know, ain't nothing we can do about that, you know. But it's something that's been at the at the table with us. Maybe the treasure, like he he doomed in. He wants to speak on that. You want to speak on that, Mr. Treasure? Mr. Treasure, I'm sorry. I'm. Uh, you speak on I missed part about, of that. About I was... this project that's going up over over my district. Um, I actually can't speak to that. I'm not familiar enough with it. Oh, I thought time. he was coming on to speak on it. No, oh, no, he's no, no, no. fine. I, no. Yeah, right, I, 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 I make sure. I make sure with the mayor. I have to. Uh, there's two things I wanted to bring back to Sister, Sister Watley. Now, the mayor had every intentions on addressing uh, the council tonight. On the recreation, on the record, he's aware of that. He's aware of the recreation, and he, he he's he's going to bring bring some, he's going to bring it to council. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know that unfortunate he he's not here tonight to, to talk about that. So I hope you forgive him, Sister Watley, but he he, he has every intention to discuss the matter of, of the recreation department. Okay, now can I finish my little bit here? Then I'm through. Yes, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. As you know, Tuesday we're going to continue our coat drive over over at, over at our at, at my at our building on Walnut uh, from two to four. We still have a lot of young people coats left seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen that we're trying to get give give away. Okay, and so that's this Tuesday. Stop by, you know. It's always on the curve side, you know. Yeah. All in your side, the phone numbers are all on email and, and, and various things. Uh, Facebook, call in and get the side, and then you pick it up on the curve side. Amen. Okay, my second thing is I have a serious problem. Okay, and, and it's got to come to an end. It's, it's been something that way before the tre this treasure came aboard, that we have a lot of serious problem about taxation and our water and people's water bills problems in, in the city. It seems like no one's really trying to do anything about it. People are complaining and complaining. And I don't know why, you know, I, we're doing a lot of aggravation. Okay. And it's not good for the city when we aggravate people that got to pay their bills and various stuff. You know, um, getting hold to the, we got a new treasure now. There's one thing I like about him when he come out running, he says he's giving out his phone number, people can call him. I'm holding him to that. Okay. <laughs> but yet, still, there's some certain things we got to take care of in this city. It, it's pitiful. You know, we got to become friendly. These are these are these are our customers. These are the ones that keep our city running. So we 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 should treat them with with some dignity. You know, people get up here, we aggravate them and stuff like that. We shouldn't have to do that. We should not have to do that. We got they got a problem. We got to be able to solve this problem because it's gonna get solved. But why should it take five and six months to get solved? We we have got some people that that been talking about their taxes and water bill going on five months. 
I personally got a problem with with the with the water with the water bill I got, and I've been I've been patiently with it, as simple as that, and and, and it ain't been taken care of yet. We're supposed to be getting some new meters or whatever we supposed to be getting. I, one time I heard we were getting new um, antennas. We tried that, so now we're supposed to be getting new meters. I don't know what's going on, but we need some answers. So I, the mayor's not here and it's unfair to, for, for, but I will be telling him about this situation because we we need to get it taken care of. Okay, so basically that, that's that's all I have at, at this point, Madam Chairman. I just want to bring it out that you know uh, we got to make people more friendly, make them make them more happy because we should become a friendly city. <clears throat> all right, um, Councilman Ch uh, Councilman Chisholm. Um, what, um, yes. Uh, first on behalf of State Representative Jewel Jones, he wishes everyone a happy holidays. Uh, this was the last day of session for the Michigan legislature for the year of 2020, and the new session will begin in January. So the legislators are, or the legis um, the legislature is currently on break. He wanted me to inform everyone that he's yours. <laughs> of course, that's for a couple of weeks. So, uh, however, staff is still working because the legislature is on break. No bills or anything are being passed, but staff is still working to help citizens and constituents alike. Um, also. I was, you know, earlier when I spoke uh, about being by, uh, beside myself about that vote, I was really prepared to ask everyone about their goal and vision going forward for the city of Inkster and what it would look like because of business owners complaining of that nature. Um, so I just thank my colleagues and the support that they gave in supporting that moratorium and pushing it forward. And then I have two things, and I guess this can kind of go towards the treasurer. If he's versed on them, then I'll offer some as well. The $150,000 that we received from the state of Michigan in a form of a grant for the amphitheater, I know it expires in January. Um, we were talking at one point in time about a potential resolution that would come from council to the state representative's office asking the Department of Treasury for an extension. Do you need that? Um, I'll have to look into that. Uh, I have not heard about this $150,000 grant. What we're trying to do right now is get all of our grant information together and uh, all the contracts. So, uh, okay. well, I know we're not going to have another council meeting until January. And I would hate for us to go into the new year and learn that we lost that without making any attempt to save it. So at this particular time, I would like to make a motion for this council to draft a resolution to the state representative's office to ask for his assistance and contact the Department of Treasury to request an extension on the $150,000 grant that we received from the state of Michigan. Court. Councilman Chisholm. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I would you want you you i'm sorry repeat that I made, <laughs> I made the motion that we request um that this council uh, draft a resolution to request assistance from state representative Jewel jones's office to the department of treasury requesting an extension on the one hundred and fifty thousand dollars grant that we received from the state of michigan towards the amphitheater in the okay. event that it does expire in january Oh, it, do, it does inspire in January? Yes, when we first got it, we had to use it within a certain time frame, and we have not, we had to begin the project rather, we haven't yet. And so what I was asking VJ was, a, did we need that? He said he's not versed on it. So I'm going ahead and making a motion that Councilwoman Wiley supported it because I would hate to come back January 4th and he's alerting us or the Treasury Department is alerting us that we've lost the grant without making any attempt on that. Okay, so it's, it's a motion to support. Uh, any discussion on it? Uh, yeah, if I could raise, uh, is is uh, Tracy on this call? She may be more familiar with this than I am. Yes, yeah, she's on here. Good evening. Yes, I am on here, and I remember prior to um, tonight's meeting, just having one preliminary conversation with Mayor Wimberly about this um, grant and that is it, nothing further. Nothing further? I will look into this further, but I don't have anything further to share as it pertains to it right now. Okay. As, with the amphitheater project? Yes. Yep. And Tracy, as I can support you, just let me know. 
Will do. Thank you. All right. All right, it's motion on the floor, roll call. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Watley. Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Howard. Yes. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. And Council Member Williams. Yeah. Mayor Madam Chair, we have six yeas. Okay. And I have um, one, wait. Madam Chair. Okay, go ahead. The $800,000 reward letter that we receive um, from, I believe, Wayne County that will go towards the recreational department. I know normally we, we got the award letter. Normally we also pass a resolution where we accept grants and things of that nature. Uh, we hadn't passed one yet at this time. Is it, oh, it would it be? Did we do that I, last? Did we should... last meeting. No, it was actually a receive and a file and he just, they discussed it. Okay. Well, we didn't formally accept it. As a... No, it wasn't formally accepted. Okay, I would like to make a motion at this time that we formally accept $800,000 from Wayne County um, on behalf of the project that will be going towards the recreational center. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Roll, uh, roll call. Council Member Chisholm? Yes. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Watley? Yes. Council Member Washington? Yes. Council Member Shaw? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tim Howard? Yes. <clears throat> we have six yeas, Mayor. Okay, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield the floor to my colleagues. All right, uh, Councilman Shaw? Yes, I'll keep it quick, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to wish everyone a happy holiday and a safe uh, new year. And also, um, I would like to have road patrol on the south side of Avondale on Arlington Street, Sunningdale, and also North River Park. That's all I have, Madam Chair. All right. Okay, VJ, you back on. Did you have anything? Yep. yep. So I apologize. I could hear you guys, but you were not <laughs> able to hear me. Um, so I, I did want to mention that, uh, during the holiday closure payments will still be collected and they will still be processed. Um, so if you are able to get your payments in by December 31st, we'll make sure that that reflects during 2020. And, uh, I, I forget now someone had a question relating to receipts. Um, if you mail in or you drop off your payment, if you provide an envelope with your address on it. Our, our, our cashiers will mail your receipt back to you so that you'll have that for your tax purposes. Okay. All right. Was that it for you? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do have um, a question for you. I know we do, we, uh, we haven't received the expenditure report and the check registry. And I think the last one that I have is ending in 930. Because we know the council normally gets that every month, and we okay. haven't received that. Madam Chair, I did email the uh, his office asking for that too. So. Oh, okay, okay. And I have one more question, and I'm not sure who's um, because the mayor is not here. I do know that a couple of us received new computers. And it's been three weeks and we still not have gotten them. So I'm not sure what Nerd Express is doing. Um, VJ's, uh, so can you ask them what's going on? Because we need them. Yeah. Uh, do you know how many laptops there were offhand? Just I'll get all the dust. Uh -huh. I can speak to that if you don't mind, Madam Chair. There's three of them. Um, he was supposed to have them to me today um, in regard. So I don't know what went on, but I don't have them today. So he will be in the office tomorrow at 930. I'll be in there as well. And so I will um, follow up with him. But he was supposed to have them today from Nerds Express, the three laptops for uh, Mayor Pro Tem Howard, Chisholm, Councilman Chisholm, and Councilmember Wiley. Okay. Oh, okay. And, um, order. <laughs> Stay and order. Order. okay, George, you out of order. Come on now. I, I still have the floor. Um, and also, uh, I'm, I'm done. Uh, 
VJ, thank you. And uh, I just want to um, say to each and every one of you, have a happy holiday, safe one. Um, COVID is still here. Uh, it looks like it's getting worse. So, you know, keep your mask on. I know it's hard, but hey, if we can do it in, the, in, in working for 10 hours, you guys can do it. Um, just have a happy holiday. And that's all I have. So we now have to go into closed session. So can I get a motion to go into closed session? So move. Support. Okay, it's moved and supported. Uh, roll call. I'm sorry, this motion is to go into closed session to discuss the pending litigation with the McGill matter. And the roll call is for Council Member Wiley. Yes. Council Member Williams. Yes. Mayor Potem Howard. Yes. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Washington. Yes. And Council Member Shaw. Yes. We have six yeas to go into closed session. Okay, Troy, check us in closed session. Okay, before we go, just a quick uh, check. I'll have Neil, uh, Harry, and Eric join you guys in the closed session. Okay. Any additional participants that I'm not aware of? Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't uh, believe so, no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Councilmember, uh, Mayor Pulsum, how are you on mute? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, everybody's back. Okay, Felicia, you'd like to read the motion? Yes, the motion is to vote in accordance with the discussion that was taken in closed session, McGill. Okay, motion has been on the floor. What's your pleasure? So moved. Support. 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 Okay, roll call. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Williams. Yes. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Member Watley. Council Member Watley. I don't see her on here either. You might have lost I'm here. I'm here. No. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Wiley. <laughs> no. Okay. And uh, Council Member Williams. Yes. We have five yeas, Madam Chair. Okay. Motion carried. All right, then. Anything else? We can call for adjournment. So move. Motion to adjourn. All right. Support. Support. Okay, in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, All right, everybody have a good holiday. Thank you. you. Too. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Be Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>